Justice, and uh, we anticipate in your hearing he will do so. Uh, it's critically important also to recognize uh, the lasting legacy of this president's nominations to the Supreme Court and also to the lower court. Uh, it's been uh, really in coordination with the Senate, a uh, tremendous uh, set of progress and achievements, uh, naming judges and justices who understand that uh, the role of the courts is to interpret the law, not to make law, uh, as well as justices who are uh, committed to uh, the original intent of the Constitution and upholding that. Uh, we're also uh, working closely. Obviously, we uh, know the American people are in need of additional COVID relief. The extent to which we've watched this speaker time and time again choose the very most partisan approach uh, with respect to uh, relief packages, putting packages on the floor that she knows will not pass the Senate, she knows will not end up at the President's desk, and therefore will not help the American people. Uh, at a moment when people's lives are on the line, at a moment when people's livelihoods are on the line, she's demonstrated again and again uh, a cynical approach to leadership. Uh, that is absolutely not responding to the needs of the people and putting the people at risk. And so we are uh, very proud uh, to be able to continue to fight this fight, and we have taken important steps uh, to move legislation. One of the only tools that the minority has uh, is a discharge petition. And so it's uh, my pleasure to turn things over now to the uh, Republican leader of the Small Business Committee, Mr. Shabbat, to talk about a discharge petition that we've got on the floor. Uh, shortly here, in the next few days. Thank you. Thank you, Liz. And uh, I want to thank uh, our colleague, uh, Congresswoman Jamie Harar uh, butler for her leadership on the discharge petition itself. It would basically uh, allow a bill that I had introduced about a month ago to come forward uh, and give those uh, who have already received a paycheck a protection program loan at second opportunity to get one if they can prove they really need it. Uh, their drop in revenue has been 25% uh, uh, or more, or it would let small businesses who didn't make it in, in the first round uh, to receive a paycheck protection uh, program loan. Um, America's small businesses are absolutely critical to the economy. About half the people who work in America work for a small business. About 70 percent of the new jobs uh, created in the American economy are created by America's small businesses. And there is $138 billion sitting there uh, available for loans to help those small businesses to survive. And most importantly, the employees that depend on those small businesses and the families of those employees to survive. That's really what it's all about, helping millions and millions and millions of American people who really need it. The money is sitting there available. We don't need to uh, appropriate any new dollars. The money is, is there. Um, but it's shut down. It's been shut down now for 46 days, about a month and a half, and one person has the key to that funding. And that's Nancy Pelosi. Um, and she won't bring it up for a vote. So the only thing we have available to us at this point, being in the minority, is the discharge uh, petition process. And virtually all the Republicans uh, would support this because they want to support small business. The question is, are there enough Democrats in the House, about 20 we need, who have said time and time again how much they support America's small businesses. Now they get an opportunity to prove whether that's true or not. And if they will support us, then it will allow that to actually come up for a vote. And the people have an opportunity to allow more small business to get that funding. Not only can they get that, that funding, but we've made a few changes. Um, it helps smaller businesses. Instead of 500 employees, it's now down to 300 employees. Um, and, and it makes the, the forgiveness process uh, more simplified, more streamlined than it was. Uh, and that will help a lot of people. And uh, I'm not going to get into all the details now, but this is something that really we ought to do uh, for those small businesses all across uh, the country, and particularly the smallest of the small. Uh, $25 billion would be set aside for America's mom and pop uh, small businesses, those that have fewer than 10 uh, em employees. I have a lot of those in my district in Cincinnati, uh, Ohio, but they're all over the country. And I've talked to a lot of members about this, and this is really critical. Again, not just to the small business and the owner, but most importantly to the families that are supported by those small businesses. Thank you.
Thanks very much. Now I'd like to turn things over to our Chief Deputy Whip, Mr. Ferguson. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. And Steve, let me first say thank you for, for all of the work that you've done, not just right now, immediately with this discharge petition, but the work that you've done for small businesses across this nation. I know, I know in my home state of Georgia and in my district, our people appreciate the work that you've done, so thank you for that. Um, look, we, we, are, we are really in a battle right now. Um, I, I think that the contrast is extremely clear on so many fronts right now. You know, we are, we are committed as, as Republicans right now to restoring our American way of life, to rebuilding our economy and renewing our American dream. You know, most families get up every single day and they think about the same thing, the things that are necessary. They want, to, they want access to a good job, an opportunity. They want to feel safe and secure in their own homes. Those of us that are parents or grandparents, you want to see your children educated. For the most part, people want to be left alone to have the freedom to achieve their American dream. And right now, we are fighting every single day to make sure that we do that, to restore the American dream, create job opportunities, make sure that folks can go back to work safely and sensibly, doing things to restore our, our way of life, like Operation Warp Speed. We are so close to having a safe, effective vaccine, and I find it mind-boggling that leadership on the other side of the aisle is saying, don't go get a vaccine that has been proven to be safe and effective for political reasons. That's going to cost Americans lives. And that's wrong, and they shouldn't do that. But we are out there. We're committed to doing that. And if you look across the other, uh, the other side of the aisle right now, unfortunately, we don't see a willing partner, but we see, we see folks that are willing to destroy, dismantle, and defund the things that are necessary to keep us safe. So the contrast is clear. I think the leader has laid out an incredible plan and vision for the future, and we're committed to making sure that we restore, rebuild, and renew the American dream. And so I look at what we are doing this week on the House floor for the next couple of days. Instead of doing something that could actually help American small business, we are, in fact, doing things that really will go nowhere. They're part, they're, they're, they are messaging bills, shameful messaging bills in many cases. And we've seen this time and time again. We've seen the partisan tack that the speaker has taken. Instead of working for all Americans, She's dedicated to one group, and those are the ones that give her the majority for her power and control and, 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 as speaker. That is wrong. It is wrong. It is wrong. I wish that of those 20 Republicans that we, uh, excuse me, those 20 Democrats that we need that have proclaimed their love and affection for American small business, I wish they'd come across the aisle on Friday, sign the discharge petition, and let this, let this House do really one productive thing this week that actually helps Americans, that would be, that would be a good day. But something tells me the Speaker's not going to allow that to happen, and that's a real shame. With that, I will yield to our Republican leader, Kevin McCarthy. Thank you, Drew. Um, I want to thank our ranking member, Steve Shabbat. When we sat and we watched the COVID coming forth from a foreign land, we need to prepare. We need to make sure small business would have a bridge to be able to survive. It was Steve Shabbat's leadership that actually created the Paycheck Protection Program. That it could save already 51 million jobs. No one knew because China lied to all of us of how long COVID would linger. So we do know now the facts. Steve Shabbat continued to work with small businesses throughout this nation. So we can modify it. With his work and Chip Roy's, we were able to do that. But now we know that these small businesses, if I just look at Goldman Sachs' 10,000 small business report, it says 36% of small business owners will be forced to lay off employees or cut wages if Congress does not act by the end of September. Well, we have one common denominator, and every time we tried to bring relief to the American public, unfortunately, Speaker Nancy Pelosi always slowed it down. Just getting the CARES Act through, she slowed that more than a week. No telling how many Americans were laid off because of her actions. When we watched how successful the Paycheck Protection Program was, that it was going to run out of money, 
The Secretary of Treasury came month, a month in advance to warn us to ask for more money, not to change the program, but just supply more so more jobs could be saved. We all know where we were that moment, on late night television, with Speaker Pelosi in front of her refrigerator, telling the world no. She delayed it even longer, no telling how many more Americans were laid off because of her action. Now we watch that she picks politics over people once again. That she has denied the ability to have a relief package move through. Schumer, because in the Senate, a minority could stop even the debate, has not even allowed the debate to come through. We know those who are unemployed need help. We know those in small businesses, at 36 percent, they're going to lay people off or shut their doors. They need help. We know schools need the assistance with protection. But then again, there's one common denominator, Speaker Pelosi. She said back before August we would not leave, but she sent everybody home. She called us back in an emergency and when Republicans put on the floor resources, PPP and others for schools. The Democrats voted no. Will the other Democrats follow suit? Will they pick politics over people? Will they pick politics over their own constituents? Well, now we have an opportunity, thanks to Congresswoman Jamie Herrera Butler. She put forth a discharge position, and just so America understands what that is, if the Speaker, with all of her power, and those in the Democratic Party that continue to back her and vote with her, will not allow the idea to come to the floor to help those in need. There's one rule, a discharge petition. All it takes is to put your signature down. It doesn't mean the bill passes. All it means is she can't stop it, that you can debate it on the floor. So this will be very telling. Who controls whom? Do you listen to your constituents? Do you listen to the people who are unemployed? Do you listen to those who need the assistance and help? Are you right back at the refrigerator with the speaker, telling your constituents, no, you're picking politics over the need of the people? Well, come Friday, we'll soon learn, because everybody will have the opportunity. If your constituents have selected you to be a member of Congress, they didn't select you to follow Nancy Pelosi, even though every Democrat does. This is the window of opportunity to show that you're different. And yeah, I know they'll probably let a few off, but say, just don't get it to that certain number. So you know what? Let's see how bold they are. Why don't they all go together? It's not about politics. It's about people that are hurting. The same people that Steve Shabbat and Jamie Herrera Butler listened to. They didn't care what party you're in. They understood you're an American and you need to help. And that's exactly what we're doing. With that, let me stop there and take some questions. Yes, sir. Speaker, you started out, uh, leader, excuse me, you started off a little bit about the uh, SCOTUS. I just wanted to touch on that. I understand that the Senate is the one who's going to be doing the confirmation, but a bigger issue is taking place where several Democrats are already speaking out about the uh, top contender's faith, her Catholic faith. As a person, that's as appalling. a lawmaker, talk to me. I think as a nation, that's appalling that they would uh, judge somebody by the faith that they have. We have freedom of religion. And the idea that they're going to demonize, and I imagine they'll demonize whoever the president selects. The real question should be, will this person, she or he, uphold the Constitution? And that should be the only question. The president is supposed to move forward, and he will. The Senate is supposed to take the action, and they will. It's the constitutional right, and they're following through. And I'll make you this one promise. Listening to the speaker, on television this weekend. If she tries to move for an impeachment based upon the president following the Constitution, I think there'll be a move on the floor to have her no longer or the question of her being speaker. She may think she has a quiver. We do, too. We believe everybody in Congress puts their, raises their hand and swears to uphold the Constitution. The president did, too, and that's what he's following through on. And to think for one moment that they would move impeachment because he's following the Constitution, we will take the movement to remove her from speakership. Yes. 
So you guys are moving forward with this discharge discharge petition on small biz on helping small businesses. Are there other issues that House Republicans could get behind in terms of COVID relief to move forward? Um, let's say airlines, there's going to be huge layoffs October first. Is that something that House Republicans would support? Yes, we, we, there are a lot of things that we have tried to move forward and support. Again, there's one common denominator that's stopping all this, Speaker Pelosi. She's done it time and time again. When we move forward before helping airlines, when we move forward before by helping the states, there are resources sitting out there. There's a hundred, more than $130 billion sitting in the PPP program right now. But they cut off the deadline. She will not extend it. There is money sitting in there, for more than $100 billion for states, but she will not allow us to move forward with the flexibility. We've tried to bring a lot of these ideas to the floor. When she called that emergency meeting about the post office to supply them with billions of dollars when they already had $25 billion, we wondered if that was the most important. So the only option we had was a motion to recommit, and we put on the floor PPP, we put money for schools, we put money for the states, and the Democrats voted no. They had an opportunity to actually vote with the people, but no, they followed the speaker once again. Yes, ma'am. Um, so the Justice Department has designated New York City, uh, Portland, and Seattle as places that have permitted violence and destruction of property to persist. And President Trump said that uh, he will not allow federal tax dollars to fund cities that are lawless zones. Uh, should Congress cut federal funding to these cities? Well, if they're not going to uphold the law, if they're not going to protect their citizens, should they pr be provided the grants that actually say to do that, if they're doing the opposite? I mean, I believe there's accountability in all this. Why is it night after night? Why is it these exact same cities? Why is it that the president, when we watched what happened with Wisconsin as well, that he offered to send in the troops, that the governor would pick a, sm a smaller number and there was more havoc? We need safe and secure streets. We do not need the Democrat plan about defunding the police. We actually need the opposite. If you go to commitmenttoamerica.com, you will find that Republicans believe we should add $1.75 billion, greater police training, community policing, and 500,000 new body cameras. We believe we can make the streets safe and secure. So why would you spend money in a place that's doing the opposite of what the resources are planned for? Why would they allow these streets to become havoc? Why are the people moving away from these cities? It's the management of what they are. I've got to go to the White House, but you had a question. Yes, Mr. Leader, uh, Democrats were going to bring up their cannabis bill this week, the Moore Act. They were going to bring it up last week, too. Yeah. But they were going to bring it up a couple weeks before. But you come from a state where marijuana is legal. What's your position on that? And what do you think of this broad being then? What do you think about legislation specifically? Well, if I watched, and let, this goes directly back to uh, COVID relief bill. The Democrats brag about the bill they voted on. Do you know how many times it mentioned jobs? A lot fewer than it mentioned cannabis. There was more mention of cannabis in their relief package. I'm not quite sure why the speaker continues to defend this as some way of, de of helping with COVID. We realize that it's not. Um, I don't support their bill. And I think they don't have enough votes either. It's interesting. They're still going to spend a lot of time. We spent a lot of time on a non-binding resolution last week. I think the American public, if you ask anybody in any district, Republican or Democrat, They'll tell you what's hurting the most. They want relief when it comes to the pain of COVID. We're working on a safe and effective vaccine, and they're telling people not to take it. We're defending pre-existing conditions to make sure your health care is there for you. Slashing drug prices to make sure you can get it cheaper. Investing in therapeutics. They want their streets safe and secure. We're providing more funding for police, not cutting it in those cities of what you talk about. It's interesting. I've watched the um, Minneapolis City Council vote to defund their police, and now they want to have a study to wonder why the crime has gone up. Then we have a plan to rebuild this economy. 10 million new jobs we'll create. You know what else we'll do is one of the ways to, to do it? We'll end the dependency on China. I do not know what the Communist Party of China has on the Democrats, but it's more powerful than any of us can imagine. The number of bills that pass the Senate but will not come to the floor. That they will not, they will not help us end the dependency on China. We had to go it alone with our own China task force. We'll come out a report just in another week. We'll bring more manufacturing jobs by doing that. We have a five-year plan to rebuild our bridges, our roads, our airports. 
making sure in internet is throughout this country. We can do all this and also guarantee that veterans have the ability, anyone, to have a job as well. But what are they doing on the floor? I leave you with this one question since you always ask me. Name me one thing the Democrat majority, one problem they have solved, because I see no results. But I see a commitment to America on the other side that can help rebuild, restore, and renew this nation. Take care.